Hi, Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations. Today I'm in Shelton, Washington to show you the installation of this remote hydraulic kit onto a Kubota B3300SU with the LA504 loader. This is absolutely the most affordable and simplest way to get a remote hydraulic kit on your tractor. Today we're going to be running these remote couplers to the back of the tractor to install a hydraulic top link. We can also run these couplers to the front of the tractor if you wanted to run a grapple or some other implement on the front. So you can run the hoses front or back. Some people even disconnect the hoses off the front when they're done, uh, say, with a snow blower in the winter and then move the hoses to the back for summer work. Super simple to change around and make it adaptable for your tractor. Check out my website linked right here below. I sell hydraulic top links for all these smaller tractors cut to really nice links that'll work for you, including these Kubotas. They have an extra narrow base end on these and I cut those down for you. When you buy a hydraulic top link from me, it ships just like this. Hoses, fittings, everything included, ready to plug it in and go. This kit comes complete with hardware, fittings, everything you need to get this on the tractor and have remotes to run a top link any other implement you could want to hook up on the rear of your tractor. So this is a plug and play kit. All we're going to be doing is clicking quick couplers into their place. And this is absolutely do it yourself. You can do this on your tractor. We're not digging to, into the internals of the hydraulic system. Everything we're doing is after the quick couplers, so it's totally safe. You really cannot screw up this uh, installation. I'm going to show you all the steps to install this kit today. All I need are a few simple hand tools. This kit can often go on your tractor in well under an hour. So I'm going to show you all of those steps today. I'm going to demo it for you. Today this is going on a Kubota, but I build these kits for all makes and models. John Deere, New Holland, TYM, all of the major manufacturers. I can get a kit built for you. Video messed up, so you're getting a voiceover for this part. First step is to mount the switching valve to the tractor. For that, we are going to hold it up to the side of the tractor with the long hoses coming off the bottom. And then you can mark those holes either with a marker or something through the holes or use a punch tool to make a divot so you know where to drill. Be careful when drilling here. There is a fuel tank behind this panel. So for drilling, I slipped a piece of metal in there so that if my drill bit pushed too far, I would not be hitting the fuel tank. But uh, use extreme caution here, just drill slowly. Once you have the holes drilled, you'll put a washer onto the long bolts in your hardware kit and slide the bolt with the washer on it into the valve. And uh, you should be able to see the threads behind the panel with the valve sitting there. And then you can put the lock washer and nut on the back side of the panel. Tighten those up with a half inch wrench and we're ready to move on with the installation. All right, let's install the knob. I've got the lock washer here on the knob and we just thread this right into the piston. As we get it tight, this piston is probably gonna start spinning before we get it as tight as we'd like. If that happens, a pair of vice grips or other pliers you can grab onto this piston to keep it from spinning, but do not grab inside this circlet. That part has to go into the valve body, so do not grab that with pliers. You could mar it up and cause leaks later. So slide that piston in, grab just on that little bit on the outside of the circlet, and give it the final twist. That's nice and tight. Check your motion of your knob, make sure it's not rubbing on anything. We don't need to change the position. And the valve is mounted. Now let's hook up the hydraulic hoses. The hydraulic couplers for this loader are four separate couplers here, right in front of the floorboard. If you've got a tractor with four couplers in one up here on its own manifold, you need a different type of kit. I build those, but it's a little different installation steps. So this kit is specifically for these four coupler tractors. And take a look here. We've got our colors, white, blue, red, and yellow. This tractor with remotes going to the rear, he would like to install this on the lift circuit. So that is white and yellow. On these B-series tractors, they group them kind of funny. So we're gonna be attaching to the top coupler 
and the bottom coupler here. Before you touch anything on the hydraulics, I want you to grab your loader lever, move it to all four positions, and make sure all of that pressure is out of the hydraulic system. Go ahead and grab your uh, three-point lift, move it all the way down. Make sure nothing is gonna move when we disconnect hydraulics on this tractor. I have my white and my yellow couplers free. Take a look here. This spring is pretty weak in the yellow one. So I'm just gonna make sure that gets well coupled um, when I put it onto the switching valve. So I call these the loader side of the coupler. These are the tractor side that's attached to the tractor. So I'm gonna take these loader side couplers and attach them up here to the switching valve. As I look down here, I see white is on top of the yellow. So as I look here, white can kind of be on top of the yellow. It really doesn't matter which one is which, as long as you keep the pairs together. If white is on top of the yellow, white is gonna go, take a look, bottom, middle, top. All these are gonna be white. All these are gonna be yellow. So I can take my hose, take a minute to get your routing just as neat as you can. And white is gonna go onto the coupler here. Yellow, I'm gonna get my routing as neat as possible. And it plugs in right there. And I made sure that seated on there as well as it could. As I go to connect these hoses, I don't want these rubbing against the hood anywhere. So take a look, I've got this structure containing the hoses already. What I'm gonna do is run the hose back through there and make a nice curve back to the switching valve. And with that, I've got a nice curve on all my hoses. You never wanna take these hoses more than about a uh, four inch curve. You don't want it sharper. You don't want a real sharp bend in them. So I'm gonna take the yellow the same route using this structure that's already here to contain the hoses. All right, that's looking pretty good. I really like the routing of these hoses. If you take your time, you can uh, really get it professional looking. The front set of three outlets on this uh, switching valve is the white. So I'm gonna take this coupler right back to the white coupler on the tractor side. Again, take your time to find a routing. And there we go, that's attached. Now the rear one goes to the yellow. The connection to the loader hydraulics are completely finished. We've given fluid into the switching valve, back out to the loader. Now we just need to put the remote couplers in place. Now I need to find a spot to mount the remote couplers. I can run these, remember, to the front of the tractor if I'm trying to run a grapple, snow blade, or other implement or to the rear of the tractor. What I'm gonna be looking for is a spot to mount this T-bracket that will keep the couplers protected and clean and uh, be out of the way of other parts that are moving. If I were running these remotes to the front of the tractor, I would create a little bit of a swoop in the hoses here to account for the loader arms moving up and down. And then I would run the hoses right here on the inside of the loader arm. Often they can be zip tied in place to either hoses or just to the arm itself. And I would get these couplers up here to the crossbar so that anything you wanted to plug in would plug in there to the side. And this T bracket would be really easy to install drilling two holes into this shield here. This is a shield for the hydraulic hoses and these couplers could mount really well right there. I'm not gonna finish that part because on this tractor we are going to the rear. So let's finish that part. I'm gonna be looking for a hose routing right along these uh, existing hydraulic lines right here and away from the brakes, away from anything that could get hot or move or pinch these hoses. My goal is to get up inside the roll bar, above the axle, right there next to the three-point hitch. Okay, I've got my hoses run up under the tractor, inside the roll bar, and next to the three-point hitch. 
This tractor has a lot of moving parts right here in the middle. So I do not want to have those couplers up too close to that. I'm loving this 45 degree bar that's going to let me set these couplers right out here towards the outside. I looked, I do have room I could put them underneath, but I really want to keep them away from this tire. So kind of high and right here on that bar is going to work really well. As I ran these hoses, I took my time to make sure they weren't uh, twisted all around. It's nice to have really straight hoses, really professional looking install. To mount this T-bracket, I've got my hardware that I've got left from the bag, two bolts and a backer plate. To mount this T-bar, I'm gonna go ahead and slide in the two and a half inch bolts. That goes over the roll bar and the backer plate goes on underneath. Use a lock washer and nut on each bolt. Well, it looks like I forgot to hit record on that last part. So we substituted in some footage from a different tractor, but on this remote T-bracket, it all comes out the same. Before I leave the back of the tractor, I do like to test out these couplers to make sure they're going to accept a coupler tip and release it just fine. So I've got one of the coupler tips that comes in the kit. I've already got it on the top link here. So what I like to do is just shove it into the fitting. And the first time you do this, it probably the rubber's a bit dry. You could lubricate it with a little oil, but you can see there, I just shoved it in, pull to release, in to connect, and that one is dry. If you ever have trouble connecting, you can definitely lubricate the O-rings just a little bit. And you can also check to make sure you can push in on these poppets. I can push in on that one on the male, and I should be able to push in on the female inside there. So I'm just gonna lubricate that O-ring with a little of uh, nature's lubricant there. And there we go, it slides in to connect, pulls out to disconnect. I'm gonna hook up this hydraulic top link and then give you a demo. Lots of tractors are designed with this pin pinched in between these two arms and especially with the um, implement on here it just won't quite move where i want it to go with no implement it might drop far enough i could get it out but i'm gonna have to start up the tractor and move this up so that i can get that disconnected i could disconnect the uh, box blade and let the arms drop but the beauty of having a hydraulic top link is i'm gonna raise that swap it out and then i can set in the top link and just adjust the length of the top link to get it right When you're first going to hook up these hydraulic top links, you might want to hold this in your hand while you're extending it, but I want you to be very careful. There can be air in the hoses and this can move really suddenly, really kind of unexpectedly, especially as you're first just getting it hooked up. So I'm going to leave it sitting right there, extend it, move it in and out a little bit to get it smoothed out, and then I'm going to try to put it into position. Well, there you have it, the simplest and most affordable way to get remote hydraulics on your tractor. Today on a Kubota, but I build these for all makes and models of tractors. And with the simple push and pull of this diverter switching valve, you can trade one of your loader functions to run the remotes. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. All right, to operate this switching valve, let me show you with the engine off. 
I'm starting with the knob pushed in. That's going to give me completely normal motor function. Of course, with the engine off, only gravity is going to move this. But I can lift, I can dump, I can do all my normal loader things. When I'm ready to operate my rear remote, I'm going to pull this knob. And now, forward and back on the loader lever is going to control the hydraulic top one. I still have my dump function right and left, and the lift function is held right in place. Let me fire up the engine and show you with the engine off. I'm going to start with the knob in. Knob in, I have totally normal loader function all the way. When I'm ready to leave the box plate, And I do have the float function. I can push this lever forward in the float, and gravity will drop that down. Thanks for watching. Check out my website below, tractorinnovations.com. My phone number is on there. Get a hold of me and let me know how I can help you improve your tractor.